with over 400 celebrity interviews and tons of pop culture nerdiness, Too Opinionated is a safe haven for your inner geek. Find us at MeisterCon.com or on YouTube under MeisterCon Pod. And please subscribe. It would really help us out. Thanks, everybody. Hi, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Two Opinionated. Super excited today. I've got actor, director, Angus Benfield with me. So welcome, Angus. Hi. <laughs> Thanks for having me. <laughs> you are the first Angus I've had on the program. Yeah, there's not many of them in America. Because normally if someone asks my name, I say Angus. They're not sure. And I say, it's it's like the beef, Angus beef. And then, ah, oh, yeah. That's a, that, so, yeah. To me, that's a very <laughs> cowboy name. You should be doing yeah, something else. Yeah. <laughs> well, there is actually a cattle ranch in Australia. Well, no, over here, I think it's called Benfield Angus Beef Cattle. Mm -hmm. So it's owned by a Benfield family, and it's Angus Cattle Beef. So, you know. Seems like possible. there's some, <laughs> uh, you know, spokesperson type of situation <laughs> that could happen there. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> if this all falls Tell through. That's where I'm going. <laughs> yeah, I'll be. <laughs> I'll be a rancher, maybe. That's <laughs> backup back up career plan. <laughs> <laughs> well, Angus, thank you so much for being on the uh, podcast. Yeah, um, thanks for me. Yellowbird looks awesome. Oh, thanks. <laughs> it's it it looks uh, uh, really fun and just just terrific. Just from the trailer, really enjoyed the, <laughs> that. And, and we got to talk about it, but before we do that, maybe tell me a little bit about what got you into the entertainment. You know, why do you want to go into that? Oh, like entertainment business. Yeah, well, I mean, I started when I was quite young uh, doing special effects makeup uh, yeah. when I was probably around eight or nine. Uh, so I wanted to be like, you know, that's Tom early. Savini. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I wanted to be like, you know, Tom Savini, Rick Baker, Dick Smith, all those kind of guys who were doing all the special effects makeup. And so I would dress up and dress my mom up and, uh, and then I'd scare my dad, almost gave him a heart attack because I snuck up <laughs> behind him when he was lawn mowing. <laughs> And had this all the blood on and stuff, and I don't. I know now as a father how bad that was. That's right. Then, <laughs> I thought this is fun. Um, so yeah, so I used to do that, and then um, I. Uh, but I was. I, I mean, I love special effects makeup, and I still do. And I, I love. There's a lot of projects I'm still working on where I can any excuse to bring in those those skilled people. Uh, I'm always trying to do it because I wanted to do that, and then I realized I wasn't very good at it because right. the technical aspects <laughs> and i would get my molds stuck and when i was trying to do the clay molds and so, and so it, it eventually and and in australia there wasn't a lot of opportunities for special effects make it wasn't like growing up in if i was growing up here in the 80s there would be lots of horror films and stuff right it wasn't much of that so then i got into um and then i yeah started working as production runner i did um so my very early job when i was 14 was working on car commercials as a cleaner mm. of the vehicle so so you have like you know big toyota campaign big huge big uh production and i would be the one cleaning the car you know i never and, thought about that but somebody yeah. has to yeah that was me <laughs> and i would clean it all day long to a point where i'd wake up in the middle of the night not sleepwalking but <laughs> sleep cleaning and i would be like i'm still clean it was just horrible <laughs> And I and I worked I worked for this guy called Ron Green and he would smoke like four packs of Camel non filters a day. He looked like <laughs> he looked like Paul Hogan if Paul Hogan was in the sun mm. a lot longer. <laughs> and he would have one of those car phones and, and I had to buy him cigarettes all the time, even though I was 14. I don't know how I did that, but um, but yeah, and so he and he was he would he would had some crazy stories and he taught me everything about, you know, how to how to how the sort of politics of the business really runs and, and he's like you know they don't teach you this in film school this is this is the real life but he also filmed the vietnam war as well so he was actually oh, yeah. in the war filming it filming all that stuff so um but yeah that was my sort of first job and then i i mean don't yeah, you I just, don't doesn't it you need somebody like that when you first start yeah, out to yeah, kind of show yes. you the roads and that's yeah, yeah. like that's that like if i had to think of that person that talked to you that stuff that's the vision i would have would yeah, be kind yeah. of this grizzled, you know, kind of uh, smoking, you know, yeah. veteran. <laughs> He's just like straight out of a movie. <laughs> Comes in with the smoke. <laughs> did you, did you ever business? try? Did you ever try uh, karate? Because you know, 
from growing up, I know that if you clean a car over and over, oh yeah, that's true. Apparently, you can do karate. I did do karate, but I was never any good at it. I couldn't even get past my white belt, but <laughs> all that waxing on it. I was so going to say, think, wax I on, wax off. Karate Kid wasn't a true story, obviously. They lied to me. Cobra Kai, they lied. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, but no, that's what, that's, and then I, uh, what did I do? Yeah, and then I, I, as I got a bit older, I, I decided to do a bit of acting. Yeah. And then um, I, I, uh, I was like an extra and did all that, which, really sucked but i did that for it's good because i know what it's like at the bottom i've right. been at all those bottom i've done all the bottom jobs i haven't done the really top ones yet but but i've been I, I knew what it was like and then um and then i went to acting school and then um and then yeah and then i got my very first acting job which was in a film called lex and rory which yeah. uh dean murphy who uh just did the most recent crocodile dundee there was another one they just did and um so he they did a he, new Crocodile Dundee? Yeah, there was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. obviously you didn't see it. <laughs> yeah, I guess I missed that one because I definitely I was, was there in the 80s when those. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, the first one is one of my favorite films. It's a great film. And then it was second was, you know, and then the, there was a third. And then I think this might have been the fourth one or something. And um, but yeah, so but he his first film was my first film. And we shot it in this little town of Albury Rodonga, which is like a border town of New South Wales and Victoria. Yeah. And um, it was a bit of a kind of, I guess what you'd call in America, like a, a little hick town, a little bit sort of, it was kind of really, it's some interesting characters, you know? So, and um, you know, that would have Pluck a Duck was the, the most famous thing that would come to their town. Pluck a Duck was like this mascot on this variety show called Hey, Hey, It's Our Day, which was like one of those, America's Got Talent shows. So yeah. it'd be a guy dressed up in a duck. And when he came to town, <laughs> they all came out. Of course. In. They love that. So that's what, tell <laughs> it, was, <laughs> it was a great experience, um, you know, except for a few incidences that happened. But, <laughs> but, um, but yeah, but so that was, that was our first film. And I remember was, I was, I was cast in this. It was my big break and it was his, Dean's first film. And I remember, really seeing how they were putting it together and they had never made a film it was they were complete independent guys who raised yeah. money from local people they pulled in crew we had like cameramen who worked on mad max and and in crocodile dundee and all sorts of stuff and um and they all came together and it was a real hodgepodge of everybody we had the local uh gas station was doing the catering so you know the food was good <laughs> of course <laughs> it was awful. and that was it and so so I, but I, when I did it, I, you know, you start to go, if these guys can do it, then maybe I can do it. And so as my career sort of stumbled along, I did some TV and things like that. I realized I really love movies and I didn't really want to just do a whole lot of television. Not that I was getting millions of offers, but I thought, well, how do I just keep, keep going in this business? And you think, look at people like Stallone and, and how he kind of got into the yeah. business and a lot of, and uh, Mark Duplass now the in more recent times. And I thought, I just wanted to try and make my own stuff. So that's what I started to do. And I uh, learned how to write scripts and I learned how to produce. And I, and then I got a job as a distributor I did that for four years. And then that was, that's been a huge part of what I'm doing. And then, um, and then I even, and, and then ultimately the irony was I ended up teaching film school for four years at the New York film Academy in Sydney. Um, and then, um, so I had never gone to film school, but I ended up teaching it for four years. And, and I tried to do the same thing that Ron Green did to them, was given the hard truths, but the class of young millennials didn't want to hear that. They didn't like that. So I, <laughs> so I had to pretend, I had to, I had to pretend it was I've all going to be great for them. I've raised my share of millennials and they definitely, they know they didn't it all. like that. <laughs> I was like, this is going to be tough. This is going to be the hardest thing. And they're like, on their phones tell me something nice and so i gave up i said you'll be fine yeah. <laughs> you'll be you fine. it's easy anyone could do this but yeah but that's that's kind of how it's been and I, we started making movies and distributing them and then um and then obviously one of the biggest big dreams of our uh, my wife and i was to come to america and so and uh, that in itself is a huge mission because <laughs> we had to you know it's not easy get, we had to immigrate, immigrate and do all that kind of fun stuff. And we've finally got our green cards now after, and we've been here five and a half years. And, um, and we just really loved, I, we love the U S and we love the, the culture here. And especially when it comes to you know, making films, everybody has just a real, really great attitude and they just, they want to get in there and, um, you know, get, get in there and make films. And, and, and I don't know, I just found it the, the, the atmosphere here is a lot easier. So we've been able to produce quite a, a lot of content and, 
and here we are. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's that's a pretty good route, you know, because you yeah. you worked up from yeah. pretty much the bottom, but now you yes, know right. everything and you know how a set works, <laughs> right. you know what you need yeah. to do, all of that stuff. Even even yeah. with the uh, extras, you know about yeah. that too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's not uh, that's not terrible. Yeah, yeah, I knew you'd done a lot of work in uh, in Australia, so I was going to ask you when the, when mm. you get to, get to the states. So yeah, so I guess a little over five years ago. Yeah, 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 yeah. Very yeah. good. Very yeah. We uh, we we saw your spot on uh, Inventing Anna. Oh yeah, yeah. Enjoyed that, and then uh, the uh, NCIS Los Angeles. Oh, yeah. You had a little appearance too, which that one was. I, I enjoyed that. One. That was because that one didn't you have you had like a uh yeah your character even had a nickname. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So that was kind of cool. Super, I super mean, fat. Super super fat. fat. <laughs> Sounds like a pool player to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, with a cockney accent. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so so we gotta talk about uh Yellowbird. So I watched, I mean it is it's the um uh, trailer, I guess, but it, it was kind of like a a commercial oh yeah, which I thought a was yeah. hilarious i thought that was a lot of fun because it was it was like a small town grocery store commercial basically you That's know it, it, it yeah, looked yeah. like exactly what you would see in just mm. a, a small market yeah, that's it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. We, that was that's actually in the film, and that's part of the st film story. And yeah, and we uh, the holiday market in uh, Redding, California, that was fully operational whilst we were filming. So oh, we cool. we dressed the uh, star the the actors who are the staff members in uh, the same color outfits. Uh, uniforms to the actual real staff so they so they would be in the background and it all sort of blend in and real people would be coming through and doing their shopping and uh they end up being extras without knowing it <laughs> and so and so it all kind of was very you know organic. i would love that if somebody was filming while i shopped i mean <laughs> yeah. what an easy way to be an extra <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> so um yeah that was great and they were really amazingly helpful um they were really supportive and they even helped cater 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 the food because they had like a deli section and i thought well we might as well eat here and yeah and they were great they, they they fed us and and they didn't get too sick of us we had to be you know i didn't want to overstay our welcome because you know i knew right. that would get a bit annoying but it was great so um yeah it's great little how long did little it take town. you to film well we we actually shot the whole movie in six days oh, so and yeah, we have four days in the in the supermarket in the grocery store, and then two days um, in uh, sort of uh, office and a few other areas. So we kind of made it that in the story, it's all set in the one location, and then um, but we kind of split that up in. We had just we had to shoot the offices somewhere else, so that was at a um, the Reading um, Visitor Center, and they let us film there and then we had the stuff in the trailer the motor home with kathy garva and that was we yeah. just did it that for a separate day so yeah we had to we, we couldn't really spend too much time one because it was a pretty small budget um we was super you know very low budget so and so we when you got when you've got much money you've got to move quickly and okay. um yeah and plus yeah obviously we don't want to overstay our welcome i mean the original idea for yellow bird was uh when tony uh jerris who wrote it uh he pitched it to me and we, he was originally wanting to do it as a tv series and i didn't i don't really have the television networks at the moment uh to kind of go into that world but what right. i can do is at least independent film um which is a little bit easier so i said well instead of doing it as a pilot let's do it as a whole film so the whole film works as a pilot which we hope to eventually turn into a, a tv well, i was gonna say you could you could use it as a kind mm. of a jumping off point for a tv uh, series. yeah yeah yeah, you wanted to. It's, that's that's kind of yeah. that was the feeling I got from it. I was like, "Oh, that yeah. can make make a TV series out of that." Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's the yeah. that's the plan. Yeah, but um, yeah, that's that's yeah, we did it. We got what's in, uh, it so what's what's Yellow Bird about, and where did the idea come? Well, yeah, as I said, uh, Tony Jarris wrote the script, and it's uh, it's about uh, my character Jake Rush, who's a recovering alcoholic, and he's estranged from his wife, and um, and she's pretty crazy and he's got this job at he sort of he's his career was once you know he was doing quite well as in, in marketing and then he kind of just lost everything due to a bad marriage and due to his drinking and now he's you know he's in AA he's, he's 
trying to you know stick with the steps and stay sober and um he's got this kind of pretty low-end job as a almost stock boy at a supermarket at the grocery <laughs> store and um and his mother lives in a motor home in the car park of the grocery store so and and so they have this kind of interesting relationship yeah and so the story really is about what this kind of it's like a microcosm of the world you know within this grocery yeah. store and and you have people from all different walks of life and he's slowly trying to kind of find himself again and, and get back on his feet and uh there's an opportunity for him to become a manager because he has some good ideas and then um and that works for a while but he has to boris needs some money to pay a lawyer for the divorce situation that's happening with his wife so he borrows money from the till and of course the antagonist in the story which is the boss's son um dobs him in or um is that what you call it over here you know <laughs> squeals on him or whatever tells his dad <laughs> what happened and um and then of course he, he loses his job again but um and then it kind of turns around at the end but it's just yeah it's kind of that real sort of um, I like those workplace comedies, you know, obviously like Thank The you. Office and, and Office Space, which was one of the original ones. And, um, and that's what we were trying to do, something like that, because everybody's had that sort of job. Everybody's worked in a, you know, obviously in a you know, grocery store or, or even an office. And there's all that. Yeah. It's, it's a funny world because you are in this little mini world. And it's almost like the rest, once you step into that job, the rest of the world doesn't exist. And there's egos and there's infighting and there's clicks and all that sort of stuff and that's kind of what we were sort of trying to trying to encompass and and um and if we do get to do it as a tv series then we can really you know explore that even further and so yeah so we had a real diverse range of ages and different types of people we have you know plastic martyr and we've got kathy garver and we have brian doyle murray doing the voice of the gnome which was really exciting to work oh with. yeah yeah you know, i love uh, kathy garver that's yeah, that's pretty yeah, it's cool yeah. that she's still acting yeah yeah oh she's 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 amazing she's just yeah. she's so busy she just keeps working and always doing she's got so so many followers from you know obviously from her whole career and so yeah. she does um she goes to conferences all the time and all those uh like uh golden age of television things and then she does uh she's doing movies and yeah i think she's off to do another premiere of another film but she's amazing so um she yeah, yeah she's uh she's a great my great on-screen mother so well you know if you if you ever worked in a grocery store that's what you run into you run into yeah. every possible type of person oh, that you yeah. can think yeah. of you know working yeah, in yeah. a grocery store and usually you get that mix of young people in their first jobs mm. older people that maybe have run into some type of situation so <laughs> you know they're trying to to fix it you know to restart <laughs> <laughs> you know, and then you have like retirees and stuff. In there. Mm, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I used to I used to do the samples. I used to give out samples in the grocery store because uh, that was a very popular job for actors because you could do it in a casual thing. So you'd give out, uh, you know, like the Costco sample kind of things. Yeah. So you'd be stuck in the middle of the grocery store all day long giving out. Once I did champagne, so that wasn't too bad. I was. <laughs> you could sneak a little of that. <laughs> yeah. <it's> like... <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the day the day would start slow. It would get going pretty good about the middle, but then might not end too well. <laughs> Was it for for this like this type of show seems to me perfect for like an independent type of project and a lower budget because it, you should be able to shoot this one mm, with a lower yeah, yeah. budget. Yeah, is it? Yeah. Is it? Um, how do I want to say this? Is it difficult in in the way kind of today's climate to get an independent film out there? Is that difficult yeah. or is it more easy? You know, no, I think I think it's become yeah. Obviously, streaming has really uh, kind of like just like it's done with music as well. You know, like Spotify did that, and then now with all streaming for independent filmmakers, like because your your monetary exchange for you know download is, is about like one cent per view right. or whatever it can be same with the music so so yes yeah, what you see with a lot of musicians they have to keep touring and keep touring and yeah. you know when they're 100 years old this whereas because they used to be able to just sell albums and cds and it's the same thing with independent filmmakers so if you're kind of at a certain level and you can package a film and pre-sell it and you've got you know john travolta in it or you've got 
Thomas Jane or whatever, then, you know, you can pre-sell and there's a kind of independent threshold of those types of films, which is in this sort of multi, they're, they're multi-million dollars. So when you look at really true independent film, like makers that used to be like in the nineties when it was that boom time and you're making a film for $10,000 or something, then it's really difficult to get it out there. Um, I mean, well, you've got means to get it out there, but it's a lot more difficult to get the money back. So, um, so we're kind of in this weird time where, I mean, even Matt Damon was talking about it, how when, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's even hard for them to make a, those films that they used to make, you know, right. like Good Will Hunting or something nowadays. He was saying it's, it's really hard because they used to make all the money on the DVD sales. Um, you do your theatrical run and you might take a bit of a loss or a bit of a hit, but then you'd get all that money back from your home box office. But now that's gone, um, movies, certain movies, unless they make a, a huge amount of money, will just right. never survive. So, so I'm trying to sort of change that a little bit by what we do with the, with our getting uh, with our theatrical distribution sort of arm because if with with theaters now is that and in America there's like six thousand theaters or so right and, and uh, some of them are main you know the main big chains of theaters all the way down to a mom and pop theater where you know husband wife or someone who bought a theater literally which we met. We talked to someone like just when COVID struck, they literally bought a theater and then COVID happened. And it was like, oh That's gosh. Awful. Yeah. So, but they're there and they've got a venue, you know, and yeah. it's like they want a movie. And so it's like, well, we want to be able to sort of get some, get that back to getting independent films into those venues so that one, the filmmaker can experience what it's like to actually have a film on, on the big screen. Because anyone who, makes a movie that's what they really want they don't want it just right. to be a thumbnail thumbnail on a, that's right. on a on your phone so and um and and the beautiful thing about that is you do a theatrical release you split with the box office and you get the cash from the sale back um you know 50 percent or whatever it is whereas streaming is like who knows what you're going to get when you're going to get it all that sort of stuff because the theatrical box office hasn't changed for 100 years it's the same as anything so so but there's been it's been difficult for independent filmmakers to get their titles into the theaters because there's booking services that charge a lot of money and um but i realized well when when we we set up our own business and we realized well there's a lot it's not that expensive to get in there and the more independent films we have streaming through there then the costs come down and we can kind of get in there so so we did a film called heaven and we we shot it two weeks and then two weeks later COVID broke out and then um and so we were thinking what are we going to do with this film and i thought well i used to do theatrical distribution back in australia and new zealand and i managed all of new zealand for um certain th- titles and it was only 170 theaters and so we thought well let's do a theatrical release in america yeah. but then i found out there was Six thousand theaters, so it was a lot more. So we kind of found it. We went through and worked with a. It was myself and a lot of the other people involved with the film, and we tr- we found the theaters, and then we ended up doing about uh, five hundred all up, and during COVID, and um, and that's when we discovered, wow, there's this huge market. There's this huge, so many theater owners want titles, um, and the, the studios weren't even giving them anything, so they were had nothing. So we came along and said, hey, how about our little film? And they did. And so, and technology now has changed because you're not shipping big containers. You can ship a hard drive, <laughs> DCP. And it's, it's so, yeah. So there's a great new, I think there's a there's a future in that. And that's what we're going to, um, we did a few theatrical runs with Yellow Bird and then we're going to do some more with other titles. But um, yeah, so the future, that's, I think that's, if we can get that going for independent filmmakers, it's going to make it a little bit easier and it gives them a little bit more. But so, yeah, so it's, it's on one hand, it's easier to make the film. On the other hand, it's harder to make the money back on the film because of the streaming platforms. If we still had DVDs, we'd all be happy. <laughs> right. I know. Yeah. I miss those days too. Yeah. You know, I miss, yeah. I miss the DVDs. I'm, I really miss the uh, albums. Yes. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, Although yeah. they're kind of coming back as a nostalgia yes. type of thing. But yeah, 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 yeah. Absolutely. It's, it's I only I think it's coming back because artists realized that's where they were making the money. They're that's like, let's right. get those that's back right. out there. So yeah, yeah. I'm glad to see yeah. it. Does it does it make it more difficult that you know movies when they go into the theater now they might only be there a week, 
Mm. You know, it's it's quick where like when when I was growing up, mm. you'd have a, a movie. It might be a theater for months. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's it, that that type of climate has changed. So I would think that for independent mm. films, it might even yeah. be shorter than that, which might make it difficult because you'd have to get you'd have to get a lot of eyes on it in a short period of time. Yeah. Yeah. It is. It is tricky, um, especially with the bigger chains. They will be a lot more ruthless with the time you have. You can somehow sometimes negotiate a, at least two week run minimum two weeks. Um, but if it doesn't make enough money, they'll pull it straight away. But the smaller theater chains, you know, they they make their own rules, too. So they can, you know, so they might keep it going. Um, and they it might drop down the number of screens, but they might keep it going for a few more yeah. weeks and stuff. Um, yeah, and I think it's just trying to cultivate that culture again. It's like with the drive, uh, watch a documentary on the drive-in theaters in America, and you know, I miss those too. Yeah, yeah, and there's sort of there's a few of them being resurrected by people, and again, they you know, I, yeah, people are starting to sort of go out to to, to them a, a bit more, and so I think that sort of getting back that culture of people wanting to go to a movie. And, and again, it's like when you look at the history of cinema, it's like in the 60s and 50s, because the television destroyed the golden age. So the actual theaters were just dying. I mean, because prior to that in the golden age, you had all these amazing elaborate theaters oh, yeah. and they were like, you know, you know, those yeah. incredible off the Orpheums awesome. and all that sort yeah. of stuff. And then television came just like the internet has done recently, but television came and that really, that's it. That destroyed the theatrical going experience even worse than it is now because you didn't have anything making a billion dollars back then it was so bad that fox studios and paramount were just being sold off for spare parts almost so yeah but then a new breed of filmmakers and a new new something different came along and that got people back so because of the godfather and because of jaws with jaws obviously started the summer blockbuster that never existed before that it people suddenly went oh there's something to see so we're going to go and see it so really there's no reason why that won't happen again. And I think the only reason why it's sort of being hindered is because of the COVID and then because of the streaming platforms making deals with the studios to go straight to streaming so that, you know, uh, there's no theatrical window or the, or it's a day and day release. And that kills the th theater experience because if you go, that movie's come out in the theater, but it's also in my living room. Right. you're more likely to go mm, will i go but if you can only see it at the theater then right. um so so there's a chance that 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 i mean I, I, I prefer to watch in the theater but if it's mm. in my house and it's yeah. affordable i'm probably going to yeah. stay home yeah yeah exactly especially if it's if you've got a whole family there and a lot of people, it's like, it can, yeah, it can get pretty pricey, but that's because you have a choice. If there's no choice, <laughs> that's you, right. And you, then you, you might go to, the go theater. Too. Yeah. Yeah. you go yeah. to the theater. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did you, you go, <laughs> did you do the, um, uh, like the, uh, film circuit, you know, the award circuit type of route? Yeah. Did, yeah. We, yeah, we did. Um, obviously with yellow bird, we, we had a, we put that in a few festivals and um, yeah. we're obviously at the uh, IFSS IFS festival on the on last Saturday. So, um, and you know, we won best comedy and Brian Doyle Murray won, won best supporting actor. Awesome. Um, yeah. But it's, uh, there's plenty of, I mean, there's a lot of film festivals around, which again is a really good thing because I mean, that does give opportunities for like this, this was at the Regal at, uh, in LA live. So everybody's film in that festival was able to screen on a big screen. So at the very least, you know, if you are an, a, an independent filmmaker and you've got no money, you know, if, if you get into a festival, um, then at least you can get an opportunity to see your movie on the big screen. I know, and, that's a big deal. Yeah, yeah, and, and have a red carpet event and that's that, which doesn't cost you any money. So so that, that so that was a great festival and there's a lot of them like that. There's about 6 7,000 film festivals all around the globe and um, film freeway you could just upload your movie and submit to all of them some of them are, are, are not great <laughs> and, and like kind of a, a bit of a scam i reckon but then and then of course you got others that are really really good and then of course then you got the real prestige ones which like sundance and Khan and all that sort of stuff which is a little bit harder to get into um for a, a you know first time filmmaker but but there's plenty of others and, and ifs was great and there's heaps more and heaps of different subdivisions too so if you do horror film there's plenty of horror film festivals or yeah. any any kind of subgroup so um yeah but the festival is a great way great way to get market free marketing 
get your film on, on the big screen and have some some sort of you know feel some sort of closure to making that film because when you make a film it drains everything out of you right <laughs> and then it's like and then to at least you can get the team together and you can see it on the big screen and go oh you know that that's why we did this as opposed to it disappears and it ends up popped up on streaming somewhere and it's kind of not the same <laughs> it's not the same yeah I, I totally agree with that so when i was uh, prepping for our interview you've got like i don't know like a whole page of projects in some stage of development <laughs> yeah. i mean where do you find the time to do all that <laughs> um yeah well we've got i've got a really good team and we just i I found it's actually easier the more we do than, you know, normally I was just doing one film at a time and it's like, you know, you, you get all the process of putting that project together, getting the financing, making it, and then you're really, and then going to the post-production and then release it. And, and then you have to start all over again. Right. So I was, <laughs> I was like, um, I thought, well, maybe there's a better way. And so we started to do like a, create a, a slate concept where it's like we keep production going and and then um we've I found, I started it's, it used to kind of try i used to do sort of everything or write and direct and act and juggle and do the catering and then and obviously <laughs> that's i can't keep that up and no. obviously so i thought well i want to start then finding other people to do those roles and so we start finding other scripts and obviously that's how i found yellow bird and i'm finding other directors and and packaging it all together um kind of like what happened i mean in the 90s it was it was such a big thing for that process of spec right. scripts as they call that was some someone in the middle of anywhere like idaho writes a script sends it to someone in hollywood and they go this is great let's make it and that used to happen all the time and they would probably buy it for a huge amount of money and that's kind of what i'm doing so i went i went to like ink tip and there was like thousands of script scripts on there by all these writers who no one's picking them up hollywood doesn't want them i don't know why because they're they're just everything's quite internalized now with hollywood so yeah. i just thought well let's see what have you got and i was like thousands oh there's great scripts and i'm like and these writers have been trying to get their scripts made for like years and years and years and years and i said look if um, i like your script let's do this but it's i'm going to do it for a lot less money than you probably want <laughs> you know we'll be right. smaller budget but we will get it done and then of course we don't and everyone's been like yes i just want to get it done because i don't want to wait 10 years or you know never see it see the light of day so we started to get a bit of a system where we found scripts and started optioning and finding directors, packaging, packaging packaging finding financing all sorts of stuff and and then you can uh, you can reduce your overhead costs because you're working with the same people right. and then it also means we can um, people can have more steady income because as independent filmmakers it's horrendous because you know you may work one day a year and then that's it so we want to try and that helps with with sort of a you know regular sort of jobs and regular income and uh, and there's a momentum that comes and then as we start moving we we start to gather more find different teams and production teams all around so we've got people in reading we've got people in texas we've got people in north carolina oh, that's awesome LA. yeah and so we, and it's like yeah so we obviously yellow bird then we've got three in post at the moment and then um and then we're one in pre-production and another three to four to go to the end of this year and then next year we'll just keep going and so and we're finding more people will hear about and they want to be involved and we just it's like a crazy circus it's kind of slowly growing more, <laughs> more, more and more freaks are coming along <laughs> it's like the bearded lady comes along and the you know, giants i mean it's like, pretty we were, great we were you're probably building a base of people who can help you with that sort of thing. So it should probably, I mean, in my opinion would get a little easier as you go along yeah, because your system right. gets better. Yes, that's right. Yeah. And we, we, we refine it. We learn what works, what doesn't. And it's just like, it's just like growing a business and we're just, you know, we're trying to expand and grow just, and that's, that's sort of what we're doing. And, um, and then when it comes to dis distributing it, it becomes a lot easier too, because we have multiple titles and we can start to build yeah. up, a, you know a bit of a brand it's like well they're those guys who do those those independent films and it's playing at the theater down the road you know you kind of build that brand i mean new line started with um i've forgotten the guy who started but he started his bedroom and then he, he doing distribution he had no office and he picked up uh john waters films you know pink flamingo yeah. and all these things and they eventually got freddy krueger the nightmare on elm street and now they're a huge massive 800 million billion dollar i mean that's so, the dream right i mean that's yeah. the, it, the yeah. dream would be to eventually get to the point that you're you're one of the big boys 
yeah 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 we'd love to have, you know that's what we want to do have a studio and be able to um yeah do just keep making great films and we i just really like films that they used to make just a whole a mixture of genres and stuff and, and we, that's what we sort of try to do and um just yeah it's great that's and what's and finding the like uh, what's the name of your uh, company uh, we've got Llama Entertainment is the name mm-hmm. of the company. And um, so that kind of formed when we were, I was, when we did Hev, Heaven just for the distribution side of things, we have people in um, Massachusetts and we were in LA. So we kind of called LAMA and we just kind of formed yeah. that. And then it kind of took off. So we had that for sort of, you know, a lot of genre stuff and um, distribution. And then we have uh, Bridge and Acorn. It's kind of another de- division which is more for like kids films or family friendly kind of stuff oh, yeah. so we kind of had so we have two you know it's kind of like what disney did with touchstone back in the right. day they kind of created that to do films like splash because so <laughs> they wanted so we so we have different av- avenues so if we want to do like a horror film or something we can go through llama if we want to do more kids film or family friendly thing we go through bridge and acorn and that's sort of you know and um yeah that's kind of how we kind yeah. of got there <laughs> i love that i was looking over your shoulder at some of your figures yeah is, that, yeah, is that some of the Universal <laughs> Monsters? Is that what I'm looking at? Yeah, that's that's Bill Lugosi's. That's what yeah, I thought. Dracula. Yeah, that's an official. Like he actually, his family estate actually is licensed these figures because yeah, oh. Bella never. If you remember watching the movie Ed Wood, how his career, like he never got anything after Dracula, and he ended up right. broke and almost homeless. Um, and so it's great that that he's his estate's getting money from the sale yeah. of nerds who buy. <laughs> well, I used to, growing up i loved watching those movies i mean that yeah, was, yeah, yeah you know especially around halloween they would you know they do the marathons that would you could stay oh, yeah. up all night watching the black and white type of horror. yeah 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 that great. great yeah 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 no but yeah no i've got lots of crazy yeah movies. yeah they were, they were uh, terrific peter sellers there peter sellers there from uh mm-hmm. pink panther he's really good <laughs> I remember yeah. watching Pink Panther at the theater. Pretty sure I snuck in to see. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Maybe not, but I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> see, you know, those movies were hilarious. Yeah, there was yeah. A yeah. Of them. yeah, yeah. No, he we was in the original as a as a supporting role. David Niven was the lead. That's right. And then and then he just did such a good job and he eventually became the lead. And then the franchise, him and Blake Edwards kept making it. And uh they hated each other, of course, but because <laughs> Peter was crazy and <laughs> but they had to well, the only way they could make any money was yeah, to come I was gonna together. say they worked well together, so that worked yeah, out yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, so where can we watch Yellowbird if we're well you, yeah, you can watch Yellowbird on um Amazon Prime and Tubi and they're probably the easiest places to find yes. um if you, and if you google it's good too now when you google a film will give you ways to watch we have been picked up by several other platforms but um but they're definitely but i don't know whether it's being released there yet but um yeah but definitely uh, the easiest way is if you're amazon prime if you've got a subscription to that and or tubi if you don't you know anyone can watch anything on tubi yeah. um and uh, yeah you can yeah tubi's out. been pretty nice because yes. I mean, you get commercials in there but you know, it it's a free great. service most of the time, yeah. so you get a lot of uh, a lot of yeah. good uh, content yeah. on there. Good classic stuff too. I was watching yeah. Sword and the Sorcerer. I don't oh, know. Yeah. that's a good. That's a good that was a good. good that a good was a good. One. One. I watched that in a the theater and it freaked me out. I remember hiding <laughs> under the seat, but <laughs> I was watching it again now, and I'm like, this wasn't very scary. Why? Was, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, it was 80 scary. 80, 80 scary. <laughs> I, was like, oh, I was freaked out. <laughs> but that's yeah. <laughs> Those actually, because I'm big chicken. But I can I can watch the '80s horror movies now. I couldn't yeah, watch yeah. them then, but now I can stand <laughs> yes. them. Yeah, they're pretty good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, not uh, not terrible, not terrible. No. <laughs> well, Angus, thank you so much. This has been awesome. I knew it would be. I you're you're so busy, but I think you're really talented. Like oh, our you. plan. My wife's out of town this weekend. She's going camping, and hmm. so I'm getting all the uh, all the guys over. We're going to watch yellowbird here at the studio oh, cool. so we're, we'll make a make kind of a guy's night out of it. oh cool thank you <laughs> <That'd be> yeah <laughs> yeah it should be fun I, i'm hoping yeah. to do that probably saturday we'll probably do yeah, that. yeah 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 saturday and oh, cool. order some good food drinks yeah 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 have a few make drinks a big make event. A, drinks will make it probably better <laughs> drinks always make comedy better. Yeah. it's like the greatest film i've ever seen <laughs> that's the truth yeah, you know, especially, especially when I was in like college, you know, we'd go to 
see uh, Naked Gun or, or oh, you know, yeah, some type yeah. of comedy, I love and you gun. probably drink before you go, <laughs> yeah. and then you laugh the whole time. <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> well, so a couple of things, Angus, before we wrap up. Um, you've got a, a ton, but anything else that you're working on that you want to mention before we go? Um, yeah, well, we have uh, about three films in post. So we have a Thanksgiving film called The Great Turkey Town Miracle, which we shot cool. in Texas. Yeah. Uh, uh, and so that's going to come out in theaters in around Thanksgiving. Um, yeah, and that's, that's a very, exciting. you know, that's a, a family friendly kind of Thanksgiving movie. And it was based on a true story. We and, need more uh, Thanksgiving movies. Yeah, well, I know. I look when we looked into it, we realized there wasn't many. No, so, there's not uh, a lot. Yeah. And so and then we have uh, another film. Uh, Purgatory Station, which is a thriller, which we did with Bob Gunton from Shawshank Redemption. Oh, Shawshank yeah. Redemption. He was the warden. And so that's a, one of those sort of self-contained kind of thrillers, kind of like Saw without the gore kind of thing. Right. And um, right. so that oh, will be coming that, up. That's probably, my type of movie. <laughs> Saw without the gore. <laughs> Saw without the gore. And, uh, and that will probably come out probably end of the year, maybe next year. And then um, okay. I know we did it. And the most recent one I we, we shot was uh, a film called The Post which is in post at the moment. And uh, uh, that was Justin Hunter wrote and directed that. And we shot that in New Mexico and that's a thriller and it's a set around the world of um, bullying, social uh, yeah. media, bullying and uh, a murder and, and the football culture. Um, and so um, we shot it in New Mexico to, to look like some more and made it look like Texas. And then we're about to go into production for a, uh, a horror sort of thriller called uh, weight of a void which is a uh, sort of like a it's kind of like um true detective season one meets Ooh. the exorcist kind of that's thing. the best so season yeah 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 well yeah exactly <laughs> so it's very it's got that sort of vibe where it's a um a psychiatrist and his brother who's a priest and they're investigating a, a, a child that's gone missing and then they just undis discover this cult and stuff so the idea is we hope to do more sort of like as a sort of a spin off on that do a few sequels and then other than that and then we're trying to do um another movie called the keeper which is yeah. a true story and that's for um to help vets um who with uh, post-traumatic stress disorder and suicide and that was george oslam whose true story of he came he was an army vet from the gulf war and came back and um would take name tapes of soldiers, who, uh, sorry, or, or vet, all vets who had committed suicide and walk along the Appalachian Trail, do the full walk. Oh, wow. And, um, so it's a true story. And I've actually got the, you know, the, the, the pack and the name tapes and everything. And, and George and we're working on the locations. We're going to film on the Appalachian Trail. And, um, and it's a really heartfelt story. That's in my we're, end of the country. I mean, West yeah, Virginia, yeah, yeah. but uh, yeah, that's, yeah, that's where we'll be. Yeah, yeah, we're going to be there, and so it, it's it's a it's a great story that will help uh, vets who are struggling, and we're going to tie in with I some uh, support groups, and then um, yeah, we have a, another couple of things if we can squeeze them in at the end of the year. Otherwise, yeah, they'll they'll roll into next year. But I, I guess that's enough for now. <laughs> You're so busy. <laughs> I'm keep it going. <laughs> <laughs> no. do you get any time away from the <laughs> yeah. entertainment business um yeah not really <laughs> <laughs> it seems to be always happening but it's good i like it i mean i love films and uh it's yeah it's something I, yeah i enjoy it sometimes it knocks the joy out of you that's the downside of as ron green would have told me when i was younger and i tried to tell the millennials but but it does it does sap that out of you so it's kind of like you kind of get so consumed by it but uh i don't know it's good because we my wife works with me on it and so that's great yeah yeah we try to do other things but it seems to be um then i end up just talking about work all the time so well, i mean if you both <laughs> love it there's nothing yeah, wrong with yeah. that yeah yeah yeah, and we're trying to fight. You, you got to keep finding the joy in it too, because again, you know, as when you're making a film, it can, it, it can, it, it, you can lose it, and so you got to. That's why it's <laughs> nice to kind of remember what we're doing and and and, right. and remember why we love it. So, but yeah, what do you enough. do to celebrate once you get one complete? Is there something special that, <laughs> that you and your wife do once you finish something? 
Um, so just on to the next. <laughs> yeah, you should have. Like the problem is too, you have this thing of like post. I call it post production blues. So if you have a really good shoot and then you finish and you you're not doing anything, it can become really depressing because you right. sort of. Uh, so we kind of yeah. I think part of it is working towards something else, but um, I think oh gosh, it's hard to celebrate. There's one thing that the, um, the Farley brothers were talking about. Which yeah. who did something about Mary, and they said this really good thing, which I think is very true. They said this: there's no champagne moments, and they meant that like whenever they celebrated something, they go, "Let's get the champagne. We got this great film deal or something." It went south really quickly, and it, and it was never <laughs> any good. And when they didn't, and they thought it was going to be terrible, it was really good, and so they just gave up. <laughs> so, so that's, yeah, I could yeah. see that. You just keep going. <laughs> just keep working. <laughs> Well, so last thing, Angus, before we uh, wrap up, um, where can we find you? Where can we find uh, Yellowbird on social media? Yeah, uh, yeah, we've got the, you can find me on Instagram, um, just my name. I think it's Angus Bendhall Official on Instagram. Uh, you, LamaEntertainment.com. You can see all our things that we're doing. Um, and obviously, there's Yellowbird, or uh, there's an Instagram site for Yellowbird as well. And, um, yeah, I think just, I don't know the handles, but yeah, if you Google that, but yeah. It that's, comes right up. Yeah, exactly. it comes yeah, right yeah. up. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Angus, thank you so much. This has been uh, just terrific. When you get, you know, the next big one out, come back. Oh, that'd be great. Yeah, I'd love to. Yeah, yeah we'd love yeah. to have uh, love to have you back on. This has been terrific. I'm, you've got a lot of projects that I, I, I was looking at, and I was like, ah, that sounds pretty good. Yeah, cool. So so I'll be waiting anyway. (laughs) That's great. That's great. As long as I sell one ticket, that's That's right. You got one sold. I reach one person. (laughs) You didn't. You're not going to get shut out. I can tell you that. (laughs) All right, Angus. Hold on one second. Well, I enjoyed that, Angus Benfield. Hopefully, you uh, enjoyed that as well. The new movie is Yellowbird. Make sure that you get out there and support Angus and what uh, his company is doing. It's not easy to to produce and direct and sometimes to to help with the writing and and to even act in the uh, films. It's a lot of hats. So he's he's a hardworking guy, really talented uh, individual. We've uh, enjoyed him in everything we've seen him in. And I can't wait to watch Yellowbird. It really does look uh, just fun and funny. Reminds me a little bit of uh, our good friend John Lear had a show about 20 years ago called uh, 10 Items or Less that was on TBS. Just hilarious. A lot of really good people on that one. This one reminds me of that. Has maybe a similar feel, different story, but a similar uh, feel. And if it, uh, if it does, if it really does have that similar feel, it's going to be hilarious. It's, it's going to be a really good movie. So looking forward to that, we'll be watching uh, in studio this weekend. Thank you guys so, so much for tuning in again this week. If this is your first time finding us, welcome. We really appreciate it. You know, we'd love to have your support. It's real easy to do. It's free. All we ask is that you subscribe. If you prefer to watch, our YouTube channel is MeisterCon Pod. Just hit that subscribe button. If you're listening, wherever you listen to your podcast from, just subscribe there. That'll help us so much. Difficult to get, just like it is for independent film, getting that, uh, getting eyes on that, no matter what the quality is, just getting the eyes uh, on it, difficult. Same with a podcast. There's millions of podcasts out there. I think the last time I checked, it was like 15 million podcasts. So it's not easy to get uh, to get noticed. And, and we've been very blessed and we're so thankful for, uh, for the support we've gotten, but we definitely could use more. So please help us uh, out. You can find all of our episodes. We released episode 587 today. You can get all those audio and video on our website, meistercon.com. It'll also let you know if we're watching something like uh, Yellowbird in studio or if we're going on location, if we're covering a convention, anything we have going on, it'll be on the website, meistercon.com. Thank you guys so much. Till next time.
Bye, everybody.